Exodus 19. Exodus 19 and verse 7. I'm going to do the whole chapter, but starting in verse 7, because that's where I want to get the title. It says, And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. So he laid before their faces all these words. So that's the thought is, lay out the word. You've got a very big Bible, 1,189 chapters, 66 books, and it's like a huge treasure chest, and you need to lay it out. You need to lay out the word before the people's faces. Enough messing around, just lay out the word. Okay, so if you're going to lay out the word, you need to, number one, take time alone to hear it. Take time alone to hear the word. It says in chapter 19 and verse 1, In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, you know, we, they just came out of Egypt. They were serving there with rigor and hard bondage. Pharaoh wouldn't let them go. Here comes Moses and Aaron, and they do all the plagues, and finally Pharaoh lets them go, and then uh, he can, ends up coming after them anyways, and they drowned in the Red Sea. So they're gone out forth, gone forth out of the land of Egypt. The same day came they until the into the wilderness of Sinai, for they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. Now verse 3, watch what it says. Moses is going to take time alone to hear the word. It says, And Moses went up unto God. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. So Moses went up unto God. And the Lord speaks to him, Just as you need to daily go up unto God. Daily take time alone to get something from God. Moses went up unto God and he got something to say and something to tell. It says, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel. And you know, the house of Jacob. Jacob is Israel. He got his name changed to Israel. And all these people under Moses here, that's the children of Israel. They came from Jacob. And he's got something to say, and he's got something to tell them. You know, a lot, the reason you don't have nothing to say or nothing to tell about the Lord or the Bible is because you're never in the Bible. Maybe you've been in a situation at work where you got some guy, he's over here talking to you about the Bible, and he's not even really a Bible believer. Maybe not even a Christian, but he knows more about the Bible than you do. Because you have not spent any time alone with the Lord to even have an intelligent conversation about the Lord or about His Word. You need to take time alone to hear it. 1 Peter 4.11 says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. The oracles of God is what God said. If and if you're going to speak the oracles of God, you've got to really spend time in the, in the Bible to know what it says. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Matthew 12, Matthew 12, 34 says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you're putting the word in your heart, that's what you're going to speak. That's what you're going to want to talk about. Sometimes... I don't talk much, but sometimes people just start talking about the Bible just to get me to say something. So, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So, you need to take time alone, alone to hear the word. So, Moses, he went up. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain. And all through here, you're going to see Moses going up 
and down the mountain. I'm just going to name some verses off to you where Moses goes up this mountain. In 19.3 through 19.7, 19.9, 19.11, 19.12, 19.13, 19.14, 19.15, 19.20, chapter 20, verse 1 through chapter 24 and verse 3. Chapter 24 and verse 13 through 32, 15. 32, 3 to 33, 4. 34, 4 to 34, 29. That's seven times Moses went up and down the mountain. And he was taking time alone to hear it. To hear the word. So he came back with something to say. And he came back with something to tell. And it says in verse 4. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. This is the Lord talking to Moses. And how I bear you on eagle's wings. And brought you unto myself. First thing you can do. You take time alone to hear what God said. And all through this book. You got God explaining to you what he's done. So that's number two. You need to tell. If you're going to lay out the word, you need to tell them what God has done. That's a big part of laying out the word because you go back there in Genesis, you're telling them what he did with Adam and Eve. You go to Exodus, you're telling them what he did for the children of Israel. You go to First, Second Samuel, you're telling them what he did for David. Tell them what the Lord has done. What has he done to the Egyptians? What did he do to, to Goliath? What did he do to Judas? What did he do to death and Ahab and Jezebel or any villain or circumstance in the Bible or your circumstance? Here he's talking about how he bared them on eagle's wings. You could tell them a personal testimony, how he carried you through your trials and tribulations. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. He can bear you on eagle's wings. So you need to tell them what the Lord's done. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. They saw it. They saw the plagues. They saw the Pharaoh's chariots getting drowned in the Red Sea. They saw how he bare them on eagle's wings. He says in verse 5, Now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. That's the next thing. If you're going to lay out the word, teach the covenants. You can lay out the word around these the covenants that God gives. It's a good way to just give a like an overview of the Bible and lay out the word is through the covenants. This one particularly is the Mosaic covenant. You and the Lord have a covenant. You have an agreement. The agreement was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and he'll give you the righteousness of Jesus Christ and nothing can take it away. But you also have all these other covenants you could use to lay out the word. You got the Edenic covenant. Edenic covenant, where you had man before the fall, Adam and Eve before the fall, the Edenic covenant. You got the Adamic covenant, God's covenant with Adam after the fall. You got the Noahic covenant, God's covenant with Noah when he gets off the ark. You got the Abrahamic covenant, God's covenant with Abraham. You got the Mosaic covenant, the one we're looking at now. You got the Davidic covenant, his covenant with David. And then you got the new covenant, which we get in on. And also has to do with Israel in the future as well. So you got all these covenants you could use to lay out the Bible. Teach the covenants. You're thinking, well, I don't have much to say about the Bible. Well, learn the covenants. Learn what the Lord's done. Tell them what God's done. Teach the covenants. So he says, Now therefore, if you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So a covenant, it's a, an agreement. 
it has to do with a cutting. Some would cut their wrists and make these blood, make their blood in, intermingle, a sealed agreement. That's what some people would do. It's, it has to do with the cutting. And you, th you think about the Abrahamic covenant, what was part of it? The circumcision. It had a cutting. You think about your covenant today, you've got the spiritual circumcision. A cutting took place. But he also calls them a peculiar treasure. And look, let's look at some few, a few verses for it. Matthew thirteen forty four. It says again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field that which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth the field. See that? A treasure hid in a field. And the church is a peculiar people. 1 Peter 2, 9. Look at 1 Peter 2, 9. Uh, but ye are a cho chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So you are a peculiar people. You ought to be a peculiar people. So this treasure, a peculiar treasure, that was it that's Israel. But it also spiritually speaking today is you. You're a peculiar people. The Lord had Israel keep long hair to be a peculiar people. Look at Leviticus 19:27. Leviticus 19.27 says, You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. He had them do that to be a peculiar people. Look at Psalm 133 and verse 2. Psalm 133 and verse 2 said, It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. So you see that how they had long hair and a long beard to be a peculiar people. This treasure that it spoke of is valuable because it's, because it's peculiar. Why is it peculiar? It's peculiar with its laws and customs and the manner of life that went along with it. It was peculiar. And see, what you believe, your covenant that you have with God, your way of life that you have with God is peculiar. People look at you and they think you're just mad. Just like they looked at Paul and they said, much learning doth make thee mad. They looked at Jesus and they said, He's beside himself. That's what they thought. They thought he was crazy. So you ought to be a peculiar people. When you, If you're going to lay out the word and people take you serious, you're going to have to be different. You're going to have to be a peculiar person. And that brings us to the number four thing is try your best to follow the scriptures. Look at verse 5 again. You follow the scriptures. He says, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, you're going to have to obey his voice. You're going to have to actually do what the word says, unlike everybody else. If you're going around, going around laying out the word, and you're not even doing what it says, you think they're going to keep you serious when you tell them the word? You can't just know the word. You've got to do it. So he says, if you will obey, obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure. You got to be peculiar. You got to be something different about you. And I may above all people, for all the earth is mine. This earth you're walking on is his. The devil may be the God of this world, but God is the God of 
That's the God of this world. That's the God of the God of this world. He, he, the devil only has it because the Lord's letting him have it right now. But the, all the earth is the Lord's. It's his world. You're just living in it. So you might as well go ahead and start obeying his voice. He said, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So Moses went up, got along with God, and he got some words to speak to Israel. Now look back at verse 6. It says, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So he's got the words because he got along with God. Look back at verse 4. That bearing where he bore them on eagle's wings, that happens literally in the tribulation. Revelation 12. Look at Revelation 12 and verse 14. And notice the Bible is written in such a way that you can see that this literally happened historically in the past. But it's doctrinal and that it's got prophecy, it's telling you what's going to happen in the future. Revelation 12, 14, And the woman, and to the woman, which is Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. So he's going to bear them on eagle's wings again, possibly give them access to a, a plane, planes and things like that. Maybe when nobody else has it, in Matthew twenty four twenty, it even says, Pray that your flock be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So that's an amazing thing. You, you can look at it historically. He bore them on eagle's wings, got them out of Egypt. Look at it doctrinally. He's going to do it again in the tribulation. You can look at it inspirationally. He bears you on eagle's wings, gets you through the trials and tribulations of this life. So he says, back in Exodus nineteen six. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words that thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So Moses got alone with God, and he's got the words to speak unto the children of Israel. He, he says they need to be a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. This matches what me and you are supposed to be. 1 Peter 2.9 1 Peter 2.9 it says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. See, quit spending so much time worried about being a part of this nation that you're currently living in. Getting so involved in the politics. Thinking that the politics is going to save you. Thinking that whoever's in the office is going to make you or break you. You're a part of a holy nation. You're a pe peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You need to try your best to follow the scriptures. You're a part of a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. So he says in verse 7, And Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and laid before their faces. He laid before their faces <clears throat> all these words, which the Lord commanded him so you lay out the word and notice he laid before them all these words you see that you don't want to just lay out a few you don't just want to just get the idea you don't just want to get the overall message you want to lay out the words you're looking at every word so lay, he laid out the word which the lord commanded him and all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So here they bit off more than they could chew. They said, All that the Lord had spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. So Moses here pictures Jesus Christ, the intercessor. What does it, so it say about Jesus Christ, 1 Timothy 2.5? It says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Here Moses pictures 
Jesus Christ, the great intercessor. See, that's another thing. Everything back here pictures something. It's a type of something. Moses is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here he's picturing him being the intercessor. Verse 9, And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. So, you're trying your best to follow the scriptures. How are you going to do that? You're going to try to. You're going to try your best. You're going to say all that the Lord hath spoken, we will do, or at least say I'll try to do it. And then believe it. If you're going to do it, you're going to have to believe that it's so. You're going to have to believe this is real. It said in verse nine that the people may hear. See, so you're going to have to hear it, hear the word, and believe thee forever. You're going to have to hear it. You're going to have to believe it. You're going to have to try your best to do what it says. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. So, he wants them to hear it. And most likely when they heard the voice of the Lord, when it was talking to Moses, they most likely heard thunder, just like they did in John 12, 29. Let's look at some verses about that. John 12, 29. It says, These people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered, and others said, and angels spake to him. So when the Lord speaks, it sounds like thunder. Look at Job 37. In Job 37, in verse 1, it says, At this also my heart trembleth. Notice that word trembleth. And is moved out of his place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He directed it directeth it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth after it a voice roareth he thundereth with the voice of his excellency and he will not stay them when his voice is heard god thundereth marvelously with his voice great things doeth he which we cannot comprehend notice that kind of reminds you of the rapture there he will not stay them when his voice is heard one day you are going to literally hear his voice. It's going to say, come up hither, and you're not going to stay. He's going to thunder marvelously with his voice. So when these people hear the voice, when it speaks to Moses, most likely it sounds like thunder. Then look at Exodus 19.16. It says, it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled his voice sounds like many waters his voice sounds like thunder his voice sounds like a trumpet exodus 20 and verse 18 says and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking and when the people saw it they were moving stood afar off so it sounds like a trumpet revelation 4 and verse 5 it says, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. You'll notice that when the Lord shows up, you got lightnings and thunderings, and in Revelation 4, 1, it says, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither. So you see, it sounds like trumpet. It sounds like, his voice sounds like thunder. So he says in verse 9 of Exodus 19, And the Lord said to Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. You see, this picture is the second coming, because at the second coming, what does Revelation 1 say? And behold, he cometh with clouds, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. See, for him to tell the words of the Lord unto the people, he had to take time alone to hear it. Just like he did back there in verse 3. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. See that? If you are going to lay out the word, if these people are going to lay out the word, 
they're going to have to try their best to follow the scriptures. They already they already said all, the, all that the Lord has spoken we will do. Now he's telling them they're going to have to get sanctified. Sanctified means set apart. You're going to have to be set apart from the world. You can't just go to work acting like everybody else, cussing and telling dirty jokes and just living like the world and expect them to take you serious about the word. If you're sanctified, then you're set apart for God's use. You know, the, the common saying, cleanliness is next to godliness. You need to have a clean life. He says, let them wash their clothes. You're going to have to clean things up. And he says, and be ready against the third day. This is verse 11. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall surely be put to death. So and the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people up on Mount Sinai. And this pictures the second coming, if you think about it. Because how long has it been since the Lord showed up in the flesh? About 2,000 years ago. And if you're looking at days, as in the way the Lord sees it, you know, the one day with the Lord is as a 1,000 years, then He's going to come back at the beginning of the third day it's been 2,000, about 2,000 years, so that would be two days the way God looks at it. And he's going to come back the third day to start that millennium, the day of the Lord. That 1,000 years when there's peace, where he's reigning. And remember, him returning is likened to the morning. In Malachi 4, 1 through 3, remember where he says, but unto you that fear my name shall the sun, S-U-N, capital S, showing you it's about the S-O-N, son. But unto you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall grow forth and grow up as calves of the stall. You know that verse? That's why it's called the day of the Lord. When the sun comes up, and you're going to have the righteous shining. So that's a picture there. But Exodus 19, 12, And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, take, take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall surely be put to death. So he's already laying out the rule, some rules here. And you're going to have to try your best to follow it. Try your best to follow it. There's going to be some things that you need to take heed to. Things that you shouldn't touch. And there shall not be an hand touch it. But he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, there shall come unto them, they shall come up to the mount. So the people come to it, but not into it, like Moses. Only Moses and, and Aaron go into it. So it says... They'll be shot through. See, there's some consequences for not trying your best to follow the word. So they could be shot through. You can't approach God without coming his way. If you try to approach God without coming his way, you're just going to end up shot through. It's like in Hebrews 12, 20. Hebrews 12, 20 says, For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. It, then it says in Exodus 19, 14, And Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. So, they're getting cleaned up. They got cleaned up, just like you need to be cleaned up. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. 
come not at your wives. And that's obvious what that means. Just like in 1 Corinthians 7, 5, you put that verse together with that. It says, Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. So this would be one of them times where it was okay to not come at your wives. So he says, Come not at your wives. And then look what he says in verse 16. It came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings. Notice this is going to really remind you of the second coming, the thunders, the lightnings, and a thick cloud. Remember, behold, he cometh with clouds, a thick cloud upon the mountain, the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. Doesn't that remind you of the second coming? So that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And like I just told you, Moses feared and quaked in Hebrews 12, 20. The scene resembles the sights and the sounds of the second coming. It pictures a rapture as well. A pre-tribulation rapture. Take a picture for the church and a post-tribulation rapture for the tribulation scene. And But look at this. They trembled. That's the last thing. They trembled at his word. So take some time alone to hear the word. Tell them what God's done. Teach the covenants. Try your best to follow the scriptures. And tremble at his word. When the Lord spake, it sounded like a trumpet. It sounded like thunder. Moses exceedingly feared and quaked. The people trembled. You're going to have to tremble at his word. And what does Isaiah say? He talks about people trembling at his word. It says in Isaiah 66, 5, Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. That's what he's looking for. It's somebody that trembles at his word, takes it serious. It's like when you get stern with your kids and you're wanting them to do something, you're that you're saying you want them to tremble at your word. You want them to take it serious. You don't want them to laugh. And that's all the Lord wants. Tremble at his word. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. See, when you're laying out the word, you want it to be so real that it's like the people are meeting with God. And you're telling them about the Lord. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke. This is where you get the saying, Holy smokes. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. So, it's like an earthquake they're in. Hearing the Lord's voice. The Lord's glory being there. His presence. And if you've ever been in an earthquake, you have no control in an earthquake. So imagine the fear. Hebrews 12, 20, Moses exceedingly feared and quaked. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded, la sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake and God answered him by a voice. So loud voices, it's startling. You hear a loud noise, it startles you. They're, they're going to tremble at his word. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. It's like second coming the Lord's going to come down that's what this pictures he comes down on top of the mountain and the Lord called Moses up to the mount he called up called Moses up to the top of the mount and Moses went up and the Lord said to Moses go down charge the people lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze and many of them perish and let the priests also which come near to the Lord sanctify themselves lest the Lord break forth upon them. See, you've got a reason to tremble at the word because there's consequences for not taking it serious. Consequences.
for not trying to do what it says. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou charges us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So they could go up to it, but they couldn't go in it. And Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. See, it's a fearful thing. You have so much great typology in this. Aaron pictures Jesus Christ as high priest, and he goes up to here. You got Moses, a type of Jesus Christ as prophet. He's the prophet like unto Moses. And Moses is accompanied by Joshua when he when the tablets are given in Exodus twenty four, twelve through thirteen. Joshua is a type of Jesus Christ at the second coming. So you have great typology with these guys. And the typology, you could lay out the word just looking at all the typology in the scriptures. There's so many different ways to lay it out, so many different reasons to, to love the scriptures and to spend your time in the scriptures. You can look at it historically. You can look at it doctrinally. You can look at it inspirationally. You can look at it getting all these types and pictures. And you see, it was a fearful thing when the Lord came down and spoke and had His glory present there. That should be the way it is when you approach the Bible. You should tremble at His Word. Take it serious. Don't be one of these people that think, well, as long as I have the idea or as long as I have the overall message... You don't want just those things. You want the words. And you want to tremble at the words. You don't want to approach it thinking that you can correct it. You want to approach it wanting it to correct you. So, lay out the word. You got to take time alone to hear it. You got to tell people what God's done. You got to teach the covenants. Try your best to follow the word. And tremble at his word.